The Outputs view on the venue lets you see an overview of your selected outputs. We'll hit some of the high points so that you know what's going on here. When you select an output, you have your name. You also have a patch indicator, and you can click here and go to your patch bay and see where your output is patched or change the patch. You have your plus and minus buttons, and these select the previous or the next output. Down below, you have your master fader, and you also have insert points so that you can insert anything you want to on any output. You can turn these on and off using the little buttons beside them. Below this, you have your delay, so you can delay an output if you need to. You also have a direct out. So the cool thing about direct outs is that the fader won't affect it. So if you want to send a mix to two different places, and in one place you want the fader to affect it, but the other one you don't, this is a good way to do that, is use your direct out for that mix. On some outputs, you have the option of having a 31-band graphic equalizer, and this is where you insert that. To the right, you have members. This tells you everything that's assigned to that output. So you can see all the assigned channels. You can also change those. You can reset the mix, which would unassign everything from that output. In this case, we're looking at the main output. So if we reset it, it would unassign everything from the left side of the main output. Now, if we look at PQs, you'll see you have some different controls. On the PQ mixer, you can choose your source that you want to mix. You can choose your pan and your level. So if you want to choose a source, you simply click at the top in the drop-down box, choose your source. You have your pan, if you want to send it to the left or the right side, or to both. You have your level. The little green button here turns it on and off. And the little checkbox links two sides. So if you're using a stereo source, then you'd want to do this so that your gain is linked and you turn them up and down and they move together. It will also turn it on and off together if it's linked. Down in the bottom left, you have a drop-down arrow. This lets you reset the mix, clear the sources, or replace this PQ's mix with one from another PQ. Now, this is very useful if you're adding another PQ and you know that you want it to be pretty similar to one that's already existing. If you have remote PQ controllers, you can lock out the controller from the console by clicking the Lock Out from Console button. This means that the controller won't work anymore. Over here to the right, you have your user assign button. This lets you define any specific channels or sources that you would want to feed PQs. So you can click here, choose a source, and then you can choose your pickoff point, top of the channel, the insert return, or pre-fader. Now when you close this back out, now you can choose your user assignables on any input source. Click the drop-down arrow, go down to user, and choose your assigned input. Here you also have a 31 band EQ option on your PQs. Now let's look at auxes. The left side is pretty similar to all other outputs. You also have the option of having a 31 band graphic EQ. Now to the right it shows the members of this aux. And to the bottom you can replace the aux mix with another aux's mix. So this is really useful if you're doing monitors on the venue and you have an artist who says, hey, just give me that guy's mix. You can just click here and replace his mix with the other guy's mix. You also have multi-assign where you can click here and select channels to assign to this aux. You just use the select button on the channels to do this. Now let's look at the matrix outputs. The matrix outputs are very similar to PQs, but they're mono instead of stereo like a PQ would be. So you just choose your source, turn it on, and set your volume. 